Hello everyone. Today I'm going to be showing a few things in Revit and SketchUp. I'll be showing that Revit is not that complicated to model simple forms like you do in SketchUp. So I'll be putting Revit against SketchUp but in a fair ground. What I mean is that Revit and SketchUp are very different. They are very different tools in very different ways and for different design stages or doing different things, but today I'm going to compare them doing the same thing. This is not necessarily the best use of Revit. I'm not going to compare speed between the two. This Revit video actually took one minute longer than SketchUp, which is actually quite close. What I, I did then, uh, I speeded up uh, different parts of the two to make them match so that things were happening at the same time, only to be able to compare what was being done. So if the video seem uh, quite fast in some points, it's just because I'm trying to match it up. Uh, but the difference was not that great. Of course, as expected, Revit took it slightly longer, but, but it was about the same. So the point of this video is to show that you can work in the same way with Revit as you do with SketchUp. Doing similar things using similar tools as you, as you do in SketchUp. So if you're coming from a SketchUp background, coming to Revit and learning this complex program with complex tools, you, you can know that you can start uh, in a simpler way and it really depends what what you're gonna do uh, but if you want to use similar I know that they exist and the main tip for today's video is that uh, Revit has this feature that is often forgotten it is create face from closed loops option something that you tick before you draw the lines and when you have this option you can work in a very similar way as you do in SketchUp because every time you draw a line just with one click you can push and pull you can draw on a face and you can push and pull again it's tricky because Revit doesn't automatically cut the, the existing form but when you draw over a face and you want to cut the existing form in SketchUp you just pull here, pull here. you have one more step that is create a, a void in order for a for it to cut the, the previous form. But now, my conclusion is, if this is all that you have to do, this simple model that I'm showing here, then why do it in Revit, really? And SketchUp is simpler, cheaper, and even slightly faster. And if you're more skilled in SketchUp, it would be a lot faster to model in SketchUp. Although that works both ways, really. I actually would take longer modeling this in SketchUp because uh, I'm not so comfortable with it. But well, uh, my point is, this is never all that you need to do. Doing some other design exercise, the result would be very different. And in most design workflows, Revit will have a much greater advantage because it will give you a lot more afterwards. But that's something uh, to analyze later. My following videos, I'll actually address this in more in depth. I'll post this over the next couple of weeks, but I'll address questions like what practices are done better in which software? When do we swap between one and the other? Should we swap or should we do everything in the same software? Can we have two different teams, uh, SketchUp and Revit team working in both? in the same project at the same time and how would they work together so these questions uh, I'll try to to address in the best way I'll pull some examples uh, exercises and uh, hopefully get some conclusions at the end so please uh, stay tuned my next video actually won't be showing any modeling it will be just a reflection or an introduction to this SketchUp Revit series 
and it will address something that I've been pondering for years now. Since my dissertation on the matter, I've been reflecting on how architectural thinking during a conceptual design stage can be hindered by a software. And, and of course, I was looking into Revit and the way to use Revit and the software to use uh, during conceptual design stages. So if you are interested in the topic, please subscribe, uh, comment below if you have any questions, or if you tune better what I'll be talking about in the coming weeks, please uh, share your thoughts and let me know, and I'll try to answer the best I can and start a discussion about this topic, and uh, hopefully we can come to a better, clearer understanding of how to use the software we, we have and take the most advantage of that. Again, thank you for watching. See you next time.